All right, what's going on, people of the internet? Welcome back to the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And this week we've got first uh, some Apple news. It's it's pretty short, but we might end up having a lot to say about it. So Maybe. there's some Apple stuff at the beginning, but also uh, some potential VR stuff we want to talk about with a the rumor. Then we've got our musings on reviews and review systems for things. Like we review things, but there's more to it. And I, this is the conversation we were having before that we're just brought into the podcast room because it was kind of existential and interesting. Uh, anyway, let's start with the Apple stuff because mm. there's there's two main new announcements. They kind of went into press release mode. Apple's done this thing before where they had some products that were ready to be refreshed, but they weren't really enough to be their own event. So they just go one day at a time with new press releases of new products. At the time of recording, it's Wednesday. So we had yesterday MacBook Pros and new M2 chips, and today, HomePod. Which should yeah. we talk yeah. about first? <laughs> uh, I think some people think it's a press release because it was supposed to come out in November. That would be like, that would follow the MacBook Pro time, general timeline, right? So they did do this like YouTube 18 minute yeah. video, like pseudo event type thing for the MacBooks anyway. The, the HomePod was just a straight press release, just a piece, like a one sheeter, which is kind of all it needed. Um, but we do have, uh, some interesting things here. So I'll just go over the laptops first. So 16 inch and 14 inch MacBook Pros are now updated with the new M2 generation chips. So before they had M1 Pro and M1 Max, now they have M2 Pro and M2 Max, which are sort of incremental improvements, bumps over the previous generations. These laptops, which I'm still, this is my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. Prove it. Uh, <laughs> it's exactly the same as the new one, probably. But I break mean, I the embargo. You, it says, you probably can't read that, but it says Apple M1 Max in about this Mac. I can tell that that HDMI port is 2.1, just so you know. Like the internet's. Oh, it's the old tell. one. This is 2.0. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, either way. <laughs> sure it is. Um, those old machines, old in air quotes, they're one year old, are still amazing. So, like, my take on these is this isn't for people who have the M1 Pros already. This is for people of older machines to be upgrading and now have a better option. As you mentioned, HDMI 2.1 is also new, which was kind of a head scratching emission from the M1 Pro and M1 Max. God, these names. I know. A lot. Uh, the MacBook Pros before, but we get that. We also get Wi Fi 6E yes. and a little bit of a performance boost. Up to 96 gigs of shared video memory and RAM. For a lot of money. For the highest end M2 Max chip. We're very expensive. Pretty oh, yeah. sick. Do we know what the max that I'm is? I'm looking at that Do you right want to look Same at prices, I think. <laughs> no way. Not, for 96 gigs? Oh, for the max, yeah, yeah you can go now up it's higher, be... probably. But the starting prices are the same. Actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 96 is what I have on my Mac Pro at my desk, which is oh, the back Mac then Pro. it well, it was the smaller end of RAM for the Mac Pro, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But so the laptop is... Prior, it added $400 to go from 32 to 64 gigs of RAM, and now it adds $800 to go to, from 32 to 96. Damn. So it's another 400. So if you're an absolute animal and you need 96, here's the thing is I edit videos on this laptop. Like I, yeah. I am doing a lot of heavy work on this laptop and I will not be upgrading mine. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm going to review it. I'm going to check it out, mm -hmm. but I don't feel compelled for the first time in a long time to upgrade to a new piece hmm. of kit for work. Yeah. Which is pretty sick actually. I'll try it for you. Sure. I'll take it after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give it a good home. Uh, uh, they also get a new color matching uh cable. magsafe put it in cable. quotes put it in quotes color yeah. matching well on the front i guess the, the thing middle. is <laughs> these laptops are only in space gray and silver so it's not as agree you were mad about the power cable yes. and what they did with it mm -hmm. which why explain why on the mad. air well because it's like quote unquote matching because the magsafe aspect and the braided cable match the computer chassis yeah but then the USB C port on the end is white which like on space gray looks terrible I think yeah. it looks worse than if it was all just white. Yeah, on the it looks even worse on the like the air, which had like the midnight color. So yeah, it'd be like yeah. a nice dark really, cable, yeah. and then just like the white plastic on the end. Yeah, which looked dumb. I will say the white cables that everyone got with the um, last year's models, they get dirty really easily, so they look kind of yellowed pretty easily because mm -hmm. they're braided and they just get dirty yeah. and it would be nice to have a different colored cable however it is just a cable functionally i do not care you don't like so. that patina the patina uh, <laughs> speaking the of cables cable. and functionalities does anyone know what the difference is between hdmi 2.0 and 2.1 yes i, I will you how, how, how you ask 
Adam. This is a tech podcast. <laughs> you should have used this for trivia because I do know. I just wanted to explain it for the audience. Oh, okay. I was okay. No, it's it was fine. a setup. You can if you it want. It was a setup. Are you going to explain it? No, you explain it. Oh, me? No, you explain it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Trivia. I don't know what the difference is, oh, legitimately. Okay. <laughs> uh, HDMI 2 got 18 gigabits per second of pass through, whereas 2.1, I believe, is quarter of that 40, no, way more 48, 48 gigabits there. per second of pass through oh so yeah two uh it also as ellis taught me a couple days ago has what is the audio term for this eark <laughs> can you explain this oh, like, Yark. I, isn't that just syncing uh no, no it's, it's, it's pretty cool so like um you know Typically, an HDMI cable is one of those cables that you plug it into an out jack and you plug it into an in jack, and it's not necessarily like bi directional in any way. But let's say, hypothetically, you have a setup where you have a game console plugged in to a like stereo receiver, and then you have that stereo receiver plugged into your TV, but <laughs> you have a smart TV. Yeah. So when you're playing games, you're sending audio from your game console to your stereo, then from your stereo to your speakers, right? But when you're streaming, the audio needs to go the other way. The audio goes from your smart TV to your stereo. Mm -hmm. to your, And you're not going to go HDMI out of your TV into your stereo. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So eARC adds an audio return channel going the opposite direction on the HDMI cable. Yeah, yeah. Sonos people have had to deal with this for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two dot one also adds support for variable refresh rate displays, mm. which is nice. Um, I'm yeah. not actually completely sure if that means like because the the MacBook Pro is variable refresh rate. Yep, like it goes up to 120. I don't know if that means it'll just like mirror it if you have a VFR like separate monitor. I'm not totally certain about that. Um, but it can also carry 4K at 120 hertz. Uh, which 8K is 60 if you want. And 8K 60. 8K 60 through yeah. one cable. Yeah. So if, you've, if you have an 8K monitor and you're playing 8K content on your MacBook, I think that means it could... 8K like, content it, out yeah, from out, the HDMI. Out. Yeah, yeah. Marquez, uh, that's not worth yeah. it for you? Well, I don't <laughs> yeah, use yeah, I just all The thing for me mode. is that it should have been there last year. Yeah. And so it's just good they're adding it. And then also Wi-Fi 6E because there's all of these Wi-Fi 6E routers that are starting to come out now. It's funny. And that's we even the, have Wi-Fi 7 now. That's so. the one thing that I did yeah. kind of think about. I mean, the Wi-Fi is great. I go home and I get like the best speeds on this computer out of any other device on my Wi-Fi network. Yeah. But it would be cool to have Wi-Fi yeah. 6E. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. Like I, I just bought a Nest Wi-Fi Pro and that is 6E. specifically is a 6E router. It's one of the first 6E routers. And it yeah. would just be nice if like the computer. We just upgraded the studio it. here to Wi-Fi 6E routers. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so glad but, we have 60 for the like 30 down we yeah, get something yeah. like that for ISP. Yeah. Yeah. Probably so much fun. First. I'm not going to buy a new MacBook just to get Wi-Fi 60. I'm just saying it's great for the people that are buying new MacBooks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just saying the last time Marquez said you weren't going to get something, we then had a plaid like three weeks later. <laughs> That's not the last one. I've been very good. I Wait. said I was going to get a Matt Black trash can and I didn't buy it. <laughs> I just remember getting it. a Slack message in like the random chat with Marquez just saying, okay, guys, hear me out. And I just <laughs> knew, I knew what was about to happen. Speaking of <laughs> things Marquez has said in the past while we're on the subject, uh, I do have a little link here in the doc from mm -hmm. something that you said the last MacBooks that came out. And I think there's a little promise you're going to have to keep good on. Can we play the audio? Paying attention to what's on the screen it disappears even more than it did on the smaller screen of the phones. But that being said, if the next version of this laptop still has a notch this big and doesn't add Face ID, I'll wear socks and sandals for a day, like Linus. Like, they, they gotta be planning on putting it there eventually, right? Like, it almost you remember useless that? to talk about how it Um... <laughs> It's not that big. Have of a you not deal. been getting tagged in this like a million? I've gotten multiple tags on Twitter and Reddit about this. I've it's, gotten tagged about this. <laughs> what I, to be fair, since Tweetbot and Flamingo died, <laughs> I have not been on top of my mentions. You're like having a rough am. day. It yeah, sounds. I lost my favorite apps for keeping track of these things. No, I think. Well, okay. It, I guess <laughs> my question is: Does this count as the next yes. version of this? Because it was—it's basically just a—it's a chip bump in the same laptop. Yeah, like, they added other stuff too. They the, added HDMI 2.1 and they 6C. added Wi-Fi 6C, not, and so. they got an extra hour of extra battery life. And they're not going to refresh the chassis of this until like the M4, I would guess. I guess that's kind of what I'm. 
maybe mm. yeah well, <laughs> i'm just trying to weasel my way out <laughs> just, just it's not that bit. big of a deal to wear like, sandals I, fine with socks come to california i said for a day for a day i think that's a bold you were i think you should eat sure a sandal that. in the winter honest. i don't think i considered it would be winter <laughs> that would be more that's hardcore. a fair point i have a compromise also, what if you can double or nothing so when they do change the whole design if there's still no face id then yeah. you have to wear crocs yeah if there's an <laughs> <laughs> oh. For a week. <laughs> For a week. Sick. Crocs? Double uh, or nothing. Double or nothing. I, w- I was going to not let him get out of this. Double or nothing. That is Crocs for a week. I don't think I want to take... I think my logic <laughs> behind this was like, <laughs> if you look at this notch, and and obviously all the technologies Apple typically puts inside of a large notch is like all the Face ID stuff, and this gigantic notch in this laptop only has a webcam and like the ambient light sensor and like maybe the microphone and that's it. And I was like, okay, they're clearly going to do more. They're going to like, you know, start doing notches across the whole, you know, all their lineups. They're going to yeah. do notches and all these things. And they want to add face ID at the same time, get us used to it. But I, I just can't no believe. Face ID. Yeah, yeah. They're clearly going to, there's no way they just did this huge notch, which is so unsightly just for the webcam. Yeah. Um, there, there is a cool Mac app, though, called Hand Mirror, where if you bring your cursor underneath the notch and click, it brings up, like, a little video preview of what your camera sees. So if you need, like, a Ooh, quick... That's vi- cool. Yeah, you have to click behind the notch so it's not just accidentally yeah. swiping by it. You just catch a glimpse of yourself. Yeah, so if you yeah, if you just, like, need a quick, you know, and they're decent that's, webcams. Does anyone know if there's a Windows app of that? Because there are some times where I'm just, like... I kind of wish I could see myself in my webcam real quick without having to like open up OBS or some. Why would you want that? You never know. I don't, man. Check, I don't know. Check your hair before a podcast. Yeah. Or the or if you. I don't know. Everyone just thought it was cool and it was on the MacBook, but <laughs> well, now it's Windows and it's terrible. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's yeah. Man. It's That's, a notch. It'd be cool. I, if you could ask Siri and be like, "Yo, Siri, do I look okay today?" And there, Siri's like, "Yeah." There are times I want to make sure the webcam's like plugged in and working and everything yeah, or like call. not dirty before a call yeah yeah typically i just like open quick time and but th- that's convenient i usually want to check if i'm dirty before a call you know <laughs> that's, that's why and i, I use need it. my digital webcam to confirm <laughs> yeah that yeah yeah me. i can't see myself without it you know fair well i mean you know new laptop it's got the notch i'll i'll Wear figure sandals. out i'll yeah i do not want the crocs <laughs> bet looming over my head so <laughs> i'll fair. i will find a way yeah um, that's not the only new machine though. There is also maybe a more interesting machine, which is the new Mac mini, mm. which got me thinking a lot about the poor iMac, the M1 iMac that's yeah. just kind of been like sitting unupdated for a while. And we have a new M2 chip, but they haven't put it in the Mac yet. Why? <laughs> I Mac. don't know. Yeah. But the Mac mini, which had an M2, which had an M1 and an M1 pro now has an M2 and an M2 pro. I don't think it had M1 pro, did it? Oh, sorry, yeah, it didn't even, it didn't have, even have M1 Pro. It just had M1, just had the Apple Silicon M1, M1 yeah. Mac Mini. Yeah. God, these names, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have the Mac Mini with M2 and the Mac Mini with M2 Pro, which yeah. is nice. It's a little it's higher good. end. Mm-hmm. No Ultra, that's, of course, for the studio. The which studio is why comes with the Pro and the Mac. Or for the Ultra. The, the <laughs> Macs and the Ultra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Mac Studio has the Macs and, and the, the Ultra. Ultra. Yeah. Which is why we don't have a new Mac Studio, because there's, no, there's no M2 Ultra yet. Yeah. Um, but we do have, like... All the I thought all the base M2 stuff would be done. Like the M2 iPad is out, mm-hmm. the M2 everything else is out. Why is there no M2 iMac? What I, I did think, they forget about the iMac? I think they've got leftover M1 chips left, and they just need to put them somewhere. And people that buy all-in-one computers are not the people that oh. like like if you pick if you pick up a Mac Mini or like a Mac Studio, you're choosing your own display, which means you kind of care about your peripherals. So that means that is an indicator that you're more of a professional. Mm-hmm. But if you buy an M1 iMac, you're probably using it as like a family computer or something basic. So those people most likely don't really care about that like 30% GPU bump or whatever. True, except same with iPad. Well, okay, iPad is just like unnecessary why? in every way, <laughs> yeah, although they have, at least they have Resolve on it now. Yeah, I figured they ship a lot more. Maybe I'm wrong, but maybe they, sh- I think they ship more iPads than they do iMacs. I'm sure. Oh, almost definitely. So if they really wanted to get rid of M1 chips, just put well, them in all the iPads. They still are like fire sailing the M1 iPads all the time. True. Yeah. I think they're tr- still trying to get rid of them, but for leftover M1 chips in general, I would bet you they're putting them in M1 yeah. iMacs. Plus, they come in a lot of fun colors. You can put them kind of anywhere. Yeah. They could move a lot of units. Look, know. these are these are going to be good computers, I'm pretty sure. I mean, we're going to test them. We'll, we'll have reviews when they're ready, but I feel like my initial reaction is like, wow, these M1 machines, if you can get a discount on them, uh, are, are still amazing. Like, everyone I've 
this is very rare. Everyone I've talked to who I've recommended get one of these M1 Pro or M1 Max MacBook Pros loves the thing. Mm -hmm. If you can find one on a discount, I highly recommend it. It's going to get software updates the same way the M2 does. Like, I don't see any downside. So unless you need HDMI 2.1 or Wi-Fi 6E, keep an eye out for those discounts because that's going to be good. A $600 M2 Mac Mini that seems... Is that is, like, sneaky. kind of the most interesting to me. Yeah. Sneaky yeah, great yeah, yeah. deal. That sneaky feels like there are, some, there are some very niche people out there that probably are like, oh, my goodness, mm -hmm. that's a killer price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just had this memory. Uh, I remember, I think I saw on Twitter maybe two, one or two days ago, as of the day we record this, of, like... This is the eighth anniversary of like Steve Jobs pulling the MacBook Air out of the envelope or whatever. I don't know if you saw that. And that was like a crazy thing to do for a computer. It was like mind blowing that that much compute could fit in a manila envelope. And now I'm just thinking like, yeah, an M2 iPad would fit in that envelope and be yeah. dramatically more powerful. Like if I had this M2 Mac mini back when I was doing the fastest Mac mini in, in the envelope? world project, not in the envelope, but like. I did the fastest Mac Mini in the world project and tried to cram as much power yeah. into a Mac Mini as possible. Yeah. This thing would just obliterate it, and yeah. it's six hundred dollars. I saw. I, I think about that Manila envelope moment a lot because I was in seventh grade in the audience for that moment. Mm. Like Whoa. I was, I was there when that happened, and I had no idea if why that was important. <laughs> I was just like <laughs> seventh grade. Okay, like, he's pulling a computer cool. out of an envelope. My brain was just mush. So I kind of, you know, I kind of feel like I do remember being really impressed. And I was like, I wish it had ports because I would totally use that. Laptop. I'm glad that you obtained consciousness before that. I, uh, yeah. before I did, I was awake. <laughs> I was online. <laughs> I was not. <laughs> I was just like, I like iPods. I was just thinking yeah. like, what is going to be the next moment that they do something like that? And I was low key thinking, what if the glasses? Yeah. What if, like, yeah. the whole time someone's on stage, they're wearing glasses and then they're like, these are actually them? That's tough. Like, that There's, would be crazy. That's yeah. tough. Everyone will notice that immediately. Yeah, because every time but someone comes be, out on stage, yeah, they get analyzed true. from head to toe. Yeah. Like, if you have a watch being rumored, everyone who goes on stage has a little sliver mm -hmm. of a watch sticking out under their sleeve. And that thing is all over Twitter the second they walk out on what stage. What if everyone yeah. wears, wa wears glasses the whole presentation? That's <laughs> even more obvious, probably. Yeah. Tim Cook always has Will it be? To like, everyone they're all Apple. different frames. Mm. That would be tough. Tim yeah. Cook does usually have glasses on. Yeah, that's they just saying. find all the presenters. They make sure that they all have exactly. astigmatisms, and they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, like all these people fit it. Usually have glasses, so I'm not sure what's happening right now. I don't know. Yeah. There was that like, there was like a few events in a row where it was like, this is our new camera, and video capabilities are great. And this whole live stream has been filmed in it. And yeah. that Stunt. Stunt. like seems yeah. pretty obvious when that happened too. And but none of them have been as shocking as like no. the earlier technology demos when like you have no idea what's happening and they just pull out a, f a whole new technology. Like that's what yeah. was always so incredible. That's, and it's increasingly rare <clears throat> yeah. to be mind blown. Le like leakings that. making that so much tougher also. Yeah. Like Although, we know all the products before. It's. It, I think it was so iconic because even if the computer did leak, that moment of pulling it out of an envelope on stage, the reference of it, yeah, leaked, totally. Like, that moment yeah, of true. a smart presentation moment was uh -huh. pretty uh, iconic. I think. Right. Well, there's another Apple product we got to talk about. The best one. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the HomePod two, second second gen, the second one, the yeah. home, the second generation second HomePod, HomePod gen two. <sighs> okay, so what's Dose. new about this HomePod? Do right. And ad break. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll just say to set the stage for the HomePod, the oh. first generation HomePod was discontinued, right? Okay, so this was a $350 Ugh. Siri <laughs> smart speaker, and wait, it was a cool sound. It, it sounded pretty good, mm. right? It la yeah, it launched at $350, remember? Yeah. And then it, they dropped the price to $300, yeah. and then that didn't work, and then it discontinued. Yeah. But it was like, okay, we're going to bring the HomePod back. What are we going to do with this HomePod? So- this second generation HomePod, it is $299 at launch. Mm. <laughs> same size, I, same size. I'd be losing money if I didn't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's the difference is the screen on top, which was this like cool animation, like LCD touch sensitive area for volume and triggering Siri is bigger. It's a wow. full coverage of oh. colorfulness oh. now. Mm -hmm. That's why right. you didn't buy the HomePod, right? right? Yes, mm -hmm. that's yes, the thing. Absolutely, no? the reason. Yeah, that's what that's new. Uh, it has an S7 chip inside. It now has a temperature and humidity sensor inside, so you can ask it 
what's the humidity in this room? Why would you do that? And do people uh, do that. Apparently that was also activated by a software update for HomePod minis, which were secretly also carrying the sensor the whole time. Yeah. It's being updated in next week. But you wanted the bigger one. So, you know, <laughs> they, they wanted the $300 bigger you wanted one. The $300 <laughs> one. So yeah. that's new. There is also a software feature where, because there's microphones, it can always be listening. It will recognize the sound of a smoke detector or carbon monoxide alarm. Yeah. And if you're not home, it'll send a notification that it heard that sound to your phone. Mm -hmm. So you'll, I mean, that's also a software update for the HomePod mini, but yeah. come so you on. Know if your house I do like that. Wait, it's a cool feature. It's a good, is it? Yeah, yeah, I actually yeah. do like that feature. Is it a, a good lot. feature? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. If I you're, thought it was dumb yeah. because if I'm in the room and no, I hear yeah, a smoke yeah, that's detector, right. I don't need my home pod to tell yeah, me. Yeah, but if I'm if you're gone away. But if yeah, I'm you call nine one one and you have them go mm -hmm. to your house. And uh, yeah, Nest true. has been doing okay, it yeah. for a really yeah. long I was gonna time. Be like, I actually think it's really Do they want you to race home? Like what, well, what are they? Just like I mean, it's like a it's it's like the Apple Watch where it's like if you don't have this product, your house could burn down. Yeah. But like that would be what if what if like we were chilling recording the podcast Wednesday and I'm like Oh, sorry, guys. My apartment's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it would I do. be good to know. Good to know. It, I think, like, yeah. in the city where it's, like, your apartment, somebody would probably call the... But, yeah. like, if I'm... Even if I was just, like, walking the dog and I got a notification that's, that like, your my house on is on fire yeah. and I'm, like, turn a block... Not even a block. I'm in the middle of You nowhere, turn around but, and you're like, yep. Well, it's like, <laughs> call 911 and, like, run back. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's cool, and Nest does it, but Apple doesn't have any security cameras, right? So this is their way of being yeah. inside the home with yeah. a microphone. It's their way of always yeah. listening, but returning the favor by giving you convenience. <laughs> yeah. You know? Thanks, Apple. Yeah. 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 So, I actually do like that. So that's that's the stuff. It's It also now has Matter, um, which I think is great. But as we learned, yes, uh, the old HomePod got yeah. matter in October of last year. Yes. Uh, however, it didn't have a thread radio. So the only difference is like you can do matter over Wi-Fi or thread, but thread is the thing that allows for that like intranet the thing mesh. where it creates a mesh network inside your house that it doesn't have to go into the internet. So it's, uh, you know, it's more secure and it's local and all that stuff. Um, yeah. That's good. I think that more expensive home smart speakers are going to get thread radios with Matter yes. in the coming years. Um, and it also can be a thread border router, which is good because you need at least one in your home if you want to have mm -hmm. a thread network. But yeah. Yeah. So HomePod's back. It's going to be saved. Baby. It's saved. I, we, we did it. This is okay. This is going to flop so hard <laughs> yeah. because it still doesn't have Spotify support, which is freaking stupid because every yeah. other smart speaker just supports basically everything and i don't care if i'm an apple music user specifically yeah. but like if people come over to your house or apartment or whatever and just like can't cast the music they have to go on to, like it's just annoying yeah like, you, I, if you live if you live in the apple ecosystem it's like a moderately cool product like you you hold your phone up to it and nfc and like you you beam your music from apple music it's like kind of cool yeah if i'm not in the apple ecosystem i this product doesn't really make me want to be in yeah. the Apple ecosystem yeah so, well you, you I, can airplay spotify and things like that but it's true but it's not the same it's not there's it's the a, seamlessness yeah. of like me asking my assistant i won't say it so i don't trigger everyone's i just say hey hey, hey g no <laughs> we get so many comments every time we do this hey, but i'm like hey g uh play this song and i literally can in the in the home app tell it okay when i ask for that i want you to do google play music or spotify or whatever yeah. else and and it will use youtube music whatever i want and it will log into my account and stream it from the internet so i'll have to do a say the command and it does it yeah it's like that's what people want yeah. just like let me say the thing and it just plays wherever i want it to yeah so I, it doesn't do that i'm also open to be being proven wrong but historically expensive smart speakers have not done well except for sonos uh, it, people don't care about audio quality. The Google, well, the Google Home Max did so bad. Like that did really badly. <laughs> I'm serious. Like I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> people don't want to pay four hundred dollars or the Nest Hub for a smart. I think well, it's three hundred. But yeah. yeah. LS has two on pre order right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that audio quality is unimportant. I really like a good sounding speaker. <clears throat> but as we we're just saying, like 
the reason the the Echo Dot and the Google Home Mini and the, the HomePod Mini, Mini are Mini. much more successful yeah. Yeah. than the HomePod Max and the sorry the Google Play Google Nest Hub Max. <laughs> Nest Hub <laughs> Max HomePod <laughs> HomePod big Two one. the the big expensive ones is because yeah. most people are just doing the convenience thing yeah and if it's loud enough to fill the room then that's fine yeah and if I want speakers I'll get speakers and that's where we're at this has happened with Google multiple times too because it's not just the Nest Hub Max that sold like not very many units but when they originally did the google home audio the big the, I audio think it was just, speaker what yeah. was it called google? i thought it was just the max that was the nest hub max i was no, google nest, home max i'm pretty google sure home max. Yes, I think google, it was just google home max, max and the nest hub max both sold really poorly yeah but any smaller versions that were like affordable and you could place anywhere sold really well the only thing yeah. that could probably change my mind is if i listen to it and it sounds Oh, Tears amazing. just run down your face if for it how beautiful incredible, it is. Incredible. Yeah. That would pop. And it, it is an updated sound signature. If you want to do the Dolby Atmos pairing, you do need two of the new one. It won't pair like one of the old and one Fun. of the new. Fun. So annoying. So that's a thing. But, God. you know, I'll listen to it. I'll give it a shot. Do you I, use Apple Music? I do not. I use Spotify. So it's going to be. <laughs> It's going to be annoying. Okay. It's going to be annoying. I'm going to ask Siri to do things. All right. And Siri is also like the most commonly accidentally triggered assistant i'm shocked that it hasn't like woken up over here because typically we'll have like the (laughs) the the home pod will sit in the studio for a week and it after enough like random quiet like an like a air conditioner will squeak and it'll just go huh it'll just wake up and you're like why you do you think i'm triggering this i'll just unplug it i think that's my favorite is that it does huh yeah (laughs) yeah chill sir i like that a lot more than the google like sorry i don't understand yeah just the huh is it's, it's a lot more natural, but yeah. it is weird when nobody said anything. <laughs> yeah, and just a corner of the room voice goes, "Huh?" And they're like, "Who was that? What? Where did that come from?" Yeah, uh, I don't. We'll yeah. see how this goes. Okay, but it's that's the HomePod too. Yeah, cool. That's the All Apple right. uh, press release week. Yeah, and I have one more Apple rumor. Just because this tweet was kind of funny to me, so I'm just gonna read it to you guys, and okay. we can talk about it for like five seconds, but. Apple has indefinitely postponed development of its standalone AR glasses and is planning a lower cost mixed reality headset for next year as a follow up to the first version coming this year. Just yeah. m- move your red thread around to where we're going Hold there. That's Wait, I need, I need you to read that again. Just because we all know about the the current Google headset, right? Wait, Apple headset? Yeah, I'm just kidding. It's not Apple. Oh. <laughs> this is like, oh. this is a tweet talking about delaying Apple. an inevitable rumor or yeah. a rumor. Right. That's then gonna make the second version mm. of the oh, where I the see. first version is okay. a rumor already. So, so are, we've seen none of this. They're indefinitely delaying the standalone glasses. Yeah, yes. I think like the Google, the Apple Google Glass kind. Of. And then they're planning a lower cost version of the headset that okay. they are going to release next year. Where then this year's headset is the higher. So this report is just basically saying version? the second gen of the thing that is coming out next year, which is not standalone glasses, but a headset. Oh yeah, this year. This year is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. The audience. mixed reality headset. AR, VR, I'm assuming like Oculus Quest Pro and Vive. Yeah, competitor. Um, competitor, whereas then the AR glasses are indefinitely postponed. Which is so But we are going to get a cheaper version of the mixed reality. Headset. It's so disappointing. These are all just I, like, <laughs> it's like rumors about products that don't exist and how yeah. they're like reorganizing how they're, I none of this will actually affect anyone until they actually come out. So I'm just like yeah. waiting for them to come out. It is kind of, to be fair, anytime you go to like a VR or AR event or where anyone is ever talking about this sort of looming in the background of every one of those conversations is well apple hasn't done their thing yet yeah and it's sort of when are they going to they're going to jump in eventually have you seen what apple's working on even when i talk to people at meta they're like have you seen what apple's doing and i'm like no yeah nobody has but we're all expecting something soon yeah so they, they talk about one like of those the stories second mover advantage but they're like the eighth mover advantage yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm yeah. just imagining apple's vr home screen when you log in is just a solid white room which is not, <laughs> normally it's like a cool fancy living room that makes you feel at home apple's is just walls of white with like no corners except depending white. on the time of day there's a ar tim cook and he goes good morning <laughs> good, morning. good <laughs> afternoon oh, good evening i would log out all the time just and tell me good morning over yeah. your shoulder is just a johnny ive sitting in a chair oh, that's what i was gonna <laughs> say <laughs> the menu voice is the johnny settings ive. button is johnny ive yeah, yeah. when you we looked home. at the aluminium of your home screen we knew that it was time for you to log off it's perfect and, and the battery's note, dead. <laughs> your battery life is low. 
<laughs> Have you considered voice acting? That, that, was, that wasn't bad. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, that's the Apple stuff for this week. I think we have, we have a, we have enough to talk about after the break. So let's do trivia. Trivia. Trivia with lights. Trivia. So quick update on the score. Uh Marquez has three. Andrew has two. David has two. Oh, close. How long is the season? How long we want it to be? Let's go, brother. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Yeah. So we have a comfortable lead on David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll give me the chance to catch back up again, and I still won't catch it. <laughs> okay. All right. In 2000, Tristan Lois first proposed attaching audio and video to RSS feeds. In 2004, the word podcasting was coined in a Guardian article by Ben Hammersley. In what year did Apple officially add podcasting to iTunes? I feel like this is one of those things where, as a podcaster, we should know the history behind. The, I have a uh, rough idea. Do we and have to I get have the, no clue. Ex- oh, wait, I'm not doing this yet. Sorry. I already forgot the question. <laughs> I, Ad I, break. I barely remember. I <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back. I have a rant, and it's not really my rant because this is a rant all three of us have had before on the side. A long, long time ago, I think I pitched it as a long form podcast episode. And then as we talked about it, we it felt too long for a podcast, which was kind of wild. But but anyways, it all resurfaced as a shower thought. And I'll explain <laughs> why. <laughs> so I ordered a mirror for my shower. Why? On Amazon. Because I wanted to shave in my shower oh, instead of that's having to clean all the beard hair off. That's really well, smart, actually. Yeah. It would be harder if I actually could grow a beard. But. <laughs> So it's not that important. Um, But so anyways, I get it. I put it in my shower and it like fogs up immediately, despite saying it is a no fog mirror. And like using a mirror in the shower that's fogged is pretty much useless. Yeah. So I thought to myself, I was like, I'm not just going to return this. Like, would we all agree when we get a bad thing on Amazon? The first thing we do is just return it and then forget about it. Get our money back. Because that's the most important. Either that or I forget to return it. And um (laughs) You know. And then just eat eat it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it, I put it in the microwave and then I eat it. Let's just got to warm it up first. <laughs> okay, anyway. so I was like, instead of just returning this, I'm leaving this a bad review. Because I've, I've felt like I have not been leaving things bad reviews lately. I need to give more negative reviews. I need to give more negative reviews. <laughs> okay. And then I just thought, I just need to give positive. more reviews in general. Mm-hmm. And Fair. that online review system is broken, oh. and I feel like Welcome to if the I can give more reviews, I can help that system. Because this mm. thing had thirty thousand mm. reviews and an over four star rating. Welcome to the rabbit hole, my friend. Mm. We this Settle has been in. a thought. <laughs> this has been a, a well a, a series of like a web of thoughts that we were at some point going to try to make a video with. Like I try to I try to come up with like a structure. When we have a thought that's worth a video, we try to come up with like a title that's sort of, at least in my head, I can picture like it branching out into either a flow of ideas with a beginning and an end or like arriving at a conclusion, like a funnel. And this one is just like a <laughs> bunch of things that I that are all interesting and yeah. have all something to do with reviews. But here's a place to start. All okay. right. When you go to buy something from Amazon, like a product, you you always have a choice of like a couple different options. Would you rather pick one with 12 reviews, 4.9 stars, or 780 reviews, 4.6 stars, all other things being equal? And there's a there's always a tipping point yeah. where you're like, oh, well, maybe if it was 4.7, yeah. I would do it, or maybe if the price was different. But like that's one of those things where it's always like, hmm, reviews online are mostly just us deciding what to do with these numbers in our heads. Sometimes you look at the, the distribution of ratings. Mm-hmm. So two things could both be 4.7 stars. But if one of them is mostly even and one of them is mostly five stars and then a bunch of one stars, that's a different vibe. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, how do you process this information and make a decision? It's all fascinating to me and I have Let, no answer. Let's answer that question first. What would you, which one would you pick? I would pick the slightly re- lower reviewed one with way more ratings. I agree with that. I, I think my reasoning for that is, is I feel like Amazon tries to game like 
they try and get people to put good reviews right. in. So 4. more ratings, suspicious. more ratings to me feels like less of a chance. Like they're going to get 500 yeah. plus a thousand plus things with not many reviews. reviews in general feel suspicious. Yeah. And it's sort of like how you can create any shape from triangles or squares. If you like have enough of them, even though triangles, you can create a circle, right? You integrate under the curve and then you get this like really filled out. Yes. You know it's, I mean? it's harder to get, 784.6 stars. I was like, what are you talking I about? I just went with it. <laughs> I'm going to accelerate out of this analogy. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we can just forget it. I give that analogy a three star out of five. I just think it's like, it's harder to get 784.6 star exactly. reviews rather than Fake reviews, stars. yeah, yeah. Uh, no, if you just like have a good enough product, people will review it enough that you have okay. 780 reviews. Where like I could get 12 4.9 star reviews like pretty quick, but it also it depends so much on the context. Like, is it a restaurant or is it skydiving? Is it an Uber <laughs> or is it a hotel? Like, if I see an Uber that's 4.6 stars, something bad. That's what, bad. The, what happened? You, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say really quickly. Yeah. If you're an Uber with 4.6 stars, you might not even show up on someone's account because, like, right in Uber, you're basically like a 4.9 or a 5. And if you're not, you're probably just not showing yeah. up and you've lost your job, the which is insane to me. The stratification of acceptable changes based on the context of the thing. Like, if you're going for an Uber ride, it's basically like 4.8 stars to 5 stars is the range of acceptable, and 4.8 is the lower end of acceptable. If you're going to a uh, a, th a theme park it's like 3.5 stars is probably fine if i'm gonna see a movie like <laughs> i'm not that. like rotten tomatoes people go to two two out of ten rotten tomatoes movies all the time but if it's skydiving i don't accept a two out of ten yeah, right? what happened <laughs> at the sky yeah. to right two out of ten so the context what now the, like your changes LASIK. reviews yeah my yeah oh yeah LASIK. My lasik i would give my lasik a 10 out of 10 but here's the other question how do you give a rating because we have this one system in our head for evaluating existing ratings and then we have another system in our head for you got the shower mirror hear me out technically only one thing was wrong with it it worked yeah yeah it attached to the shower it just didn't do the one thing which is fog so like it four just stars. didn't do the one thing that made it usable it did yeah. reflect so it reflected you <laughs> it, it was didn't a mirror break you took it out the box it was packaged well like nothing was the same okay, so it looked this, the same way as the picture this is kind of okay so this is kind of what i wanted to talk about in this sense is like i think the way we review things should be different in the sense that we should stop using the only ones and fives like it feels like we're in this scenario of like i either hate this thing therefore it gets a one and mm -hmm. i'm putting no other thought into it or like I really loved this and it's a five, but I think we should stop giving fives because for five, it has to be perfect. Like what was the last thing either of you guys bought that was like a literally perfect thing? Like you had zero qualms about it. That's not very often. The, uh, and this is not a joke, the fogless shaving mirror in my shower. Well, I need to get a, <laughs> oh, do you really? have an affiliate link for that? Yeah, uh, it's sweet. It's awesome. Okay, I'm five going stars. to actually ask you but for that, but. Is there any part of that that could have been better? That's the question. Like, well, that's a so slightly different question because okay. I think something can be perfect and still could be better. Really? I think that's possible. Really? Yeah, I think there are products out there like <laughs> right now, if I, like it's, imagine a super simple product like a, a hammer. Sure. I could go to Home Depot right now and for $20, pick up a hammer off the shelf and it's heavy and it's weighted and it's got a nice grip and I hammer in the nail in one shot and I'm like, this hammer, nothing wrong with it, five out of five. Mm -hmm. But it could have a nice carbon fiber weave on the inside to make the handle lighter and that would be better. I'm not going to give this hammer a four now because it's not even better like you, yeah. you know what i'm saying so that's like, like that's better. like that's like reviewing in a vacuum versus reviewing against like everything else that's available i guess right but then you have to take like the price into account and like all of this stuff the price has a lot to do with my thing is like my macbook pro 16 inch i to me is perfect except it could have wi-fi 6e it could have hdmi 2.1 which um, technically was which... still true before this new one came out yeah yeah, yeah totally but, and it has yeah, the notch totally that doesn't have face ID. So it's like, yeah. I love it. And I don't, there's nothing that I'm like, it's so, it's an, so annoying that I don't want it. But, but what's wrong with giving that a four? A four is a no, great I, score. I, cause it was, it was the I best agree. available thing. A four the, the is hard, a fantastic score. I okay. think we should, 
the hard thing is everyone needs to move to your system, which I'm not saying they shouldn't. I'm saying they should. It's we just need gonna, a hashtag. It will be difficult. That solves everything. Yeah, because pe- people do need to be more kind of critical because right now ratings are ra- five star to ten tar. Bleh, ten tar. Five star ratings are pretty binary. It's like it, it, you either get a five star or even oh. if you get a four or a three, that's basically a one. And mm-hmm. then it creates, especially when you have like all of these reviews that created like a 4.2, 4.3, like even if you have a four four star and a five star there are 10 systems in between that yeah that's what's confusing about yeah, it a like, 4.1 star is just a matter of, it's just a function of how many one stars you and got. what you're comparing it to a 4.1 star compared to a five star is a one star versus a is a one star versus right a zero on star versus a one star yeah five. this is like another one of those thoughts it's yeah. like a five if if something is pretty good but it has like a 4.5 that means it got a certain number of one stars but if it's a 4.2 that means it probably got more one stars than the 4.5 yeah so yeah that's another thought they're binary but yeah binary is another thing yeah so a lot of rating systems for evaluating i don't even think products anymore but content a lot of times has turned into binary because it's just a simple quick thing like youtube used to be a, a five star rating system yeah not that long ago i mean for me that was around back then but yeah. like a couple old. years ago i'm pretty old <laughs> okay <boomer>. I, remember, <laughs> I remember i remember back in my day back in my day asking for a five star rating on a video and that was cool because people would leave five star ratings but my video would end up with a 4.9 because some people gave it a one some people gave it a two very rarely did anyone give it a two three or a four but that was a real option but like no one really used those buttons, so YouTube just turned it into like or dislike. If you want to train your algorithm, you either hit like to see more or you hit dislike to see less, and maybe that supports the creator. You can't even see the dislikes anymore, <laughs> yeah. which is funny, but now it's like on yeah. TikTok, it's it's almost less than binary. Because, and I don't, maybe we're not reviewing content, but like I can like it, but also if I just watch it till the end, that's yeah. positive signal. Yeah. And then that's the same on YouTube too, though. I mean, I'm the Netflix too. Like, if you watch something all the way to the end, they assume you like it. Netflix, I recently saw added a love button. So there's a like, and the have you seen this? Like, like. like. There's like a heart (laughs) for like like me, or do you like like me? (laughs) And there's a dislike, but there's a love button. So now it's like. Yeah, you watch something that gives it a positive signal. Do you guys ever like stuff on Netflix? I don't. Netflix no. really Anyone? needs validation. I like stuff. Do you really? Yeah, sometimes. Just to feed the decide. algorithm? Yeah. yeah. To be like, more of this, please. <laughs> yeah. Also, I share it with my girlfriend, so sometimes it'll be like a movie that I really don't care about. And if she's liked it, I'm just screwed. So I try to like push it back in my direction by pushing the like <laughs> button. Can I, exactly. I also want to make a really quick note about YouTube removing the dislike button. I know yeah. we already had this conversation. The like, button's still there. The count right. The count's gone. Oh, okay. I was just gonna say, if they removed the button, it wouldn't change anything, because liking the like button or not liking the like button is is the same thing as liking or disliking. Only my only pushback would be people have to really the the ratio of likes and dislikes on YouTube is like most people don't press the button at all. Yeah. And the default for any engagement for most people is to hit the like button. Yeah. Only in the strange case that people really don't like the video do you end up with a lot of dislikes or something went wrong. So if you remove the button, you kind of remove the difference between not hitting the button and really disliking it and wanting to signal that you dislike it. So that's like, it's not quite a binary. It's like a three-tiered rating system as it currently exists. Um, There's also the snowball effect like on Reddit like upvoting versus downvoting things. If you see something that's really highly downvoted, you're more likely to downvote To it. pile on, yeah. yeah. Or upvote. That's like, aware of all of our videos on our Android. It's pretty much like, was the first couple comments good or bad? And that yeah. will, the entire That's thread the entire will yeah. trend. Because nobody the, wants to be the like, nobody wants to be the person that doesn't have the same opinion. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed that actually. I don't know, I don't have a name for it yet, but I could probably write a thesis paper on like momentum of I'm sure sentiment those, analysis. That has almost definitely been like online. heavily studied, probably on, through Reddit specifically. Yeah. We have the benefit now of like we publish content on YouTube and we get instant feedback. But I even I will notice now on our own videos or on videos in my sub box, if I check very early for the sentiment of comments within the first two minutes of a 10 minute video, those sentiments can drive the rest of the video unless it's a pretty dramatically terrible video. Yeah, yeah. It usually will just set it in motion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's all about that's another, you know, blob in my head of like review momentum. Mm-hmm. And if you if you're an Amazon seller, you need to get as many reviews as possible and they need to be five stars because the second it starts turning, 
Yeah. It's turning. That's one of my problems with Amazon, though, is now imagine that momentum carries on year after year after year. Imagine you made an updated version of, let's say, state of 4k and rather than a new video it replaced it and you kept all the old comments so like on amazon oh. you could have um let's just say like the galaxy watch 4 that's a bad example but like the galaxy watch and then the new generation comes out it stays under the same in the old listing in the yeah. old listing oh, and then terrible. so now you look at reviews and they're from like 2019 and they're great you sort by frequent and they're like one stars like the new version of this sucks I like never yeah. buy it, but that's not what you see unless you dig yeah. for it. It's easy to dupe people like yeah. that, like having having new product listings, taking advantage of the momentum of old ratings. There is one place though where we we actually accept that, which is software, <laughs> because <laughs> if if you have an app in the app store, there's constantly new versions coming out, and they just keep all the old ratings. Like we have a podcast, and the ratings when we put up a new episode don't go away. They stay, and we Fair. just keep continue updating it over time. They've always been five stars. But. Yeah, but if you sort by most recent, then you can get a better idea of the newest version of the product yeah. and how it's going versus older things. This happened really recently. I don't remember if it was Sony earbuds or a Sony phone or something, but I remember like some Xperia product, I think it was, had just come, like, hadn't even come out yet. Mm -hmm. And I looked on Amazon to see if it was like available for pre-order, and it already had like thousands of reviews. And I was super confused. And I looked at them and they had just swapped out the ex like existing listing of the previous version of the product. So it kept all of the same reviews. That's but it was a new product that hadn't even come out yet. Yeah, for a tech product, that seems insane. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think it was a Sony product. I don't particularly remember, but mm. um, it was really weird. I was like, how are you even allowed to do that? This is not even the same product. It's yeah. weird. It's like more common when an existing product that is like technically the same model number but they like change some of the materials which are worse now and they change yeah, the manufacturing a, process or something there's a threshold for how much change is allowed before you need a new a new listing yeah basically yeah, yeah. that's why there's, i was surprised with the sony thing it was weird it's like the the another th thought in this <laughs> pool of thought this is a rant <laughs> yeah is, is like sure. uh the the more um complicated a product is the more lenience you give its flaws. So if you, again, just to use a hammer example, you buy a super simple hammer, it only has one job, right? So if it fails at the one job, yeah. I guess it's one star. Like it doesn't, there's no legit, I mean, you can't really. It could fail it. This is the thing is like, I'm just super simple. Yeah. yeah. It could be like, uh, the hammer could be too small for a like, an exterior deck nail versus like a finishing nail for hanging <laughs> yeah. stuff in. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, trying to go like point. all the way simple, like a brick. If I'm reviewing it, <laughs> like it either works or it, didn't it doesn't. break through the window of my enemy. Like, I find it <laughs> difficult to give a three star review for a brick, right? But then we we sit here and we review like electronics and gadgets are very, very intricate and, and nuanced. And so like when a, when a phone comes out, it's like it might have a really nice screen, but it might have like not the best processor, but it does have a lot of RAM, so it's future proof. And the company has a good record for software updates. So we're, we're teetering at like four stars, but then the camera system this year is really bad. So yeah. now we're back to 3.8 stars. Are so complex. But for video quality, it somehow does really well. The stabilization and the features they added this year are great. So it's back up to 4.1 stars, right? And so you have all these things competing yeah. for like Dynamics. dragging it in different directions and you end up with a review somewhere in the middle. So you yeah. almost never end up with a perfect five or a perfect one for an exceedingly complex product. Yeah. So you probably don't have to give that many fives or ones, but nobody gives threes Yeah. <laughs> unless they have a mid Change experience. It. Give threes. Yeah. Threes are not bad. A 3.5 is a seven out of 10, if you think about it. That's yeah. not a bad score. Yeah. That's not bad. C minus. What's wrong with seven out of 10? It means it did the majority of the things right. I think that's why... Would you get on like, a plane that worked seven out of ten? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna. I as a score, not bad. I, I yeah. I just give less ones, give less fives. I mean, here's what I'm gonna do, and everyone can join with me if you want. Okay, I'm going to review every single product I buy on like Amazon, Etsy, any online store gadget. I'm not okay. gonna do this because we've gone on a million tangents about restaurants and everything being different Products. everything i yeah. every product i buy mm -hmm. i'm going to review and i'm going to limit myself to one five star review per month i only like <clears throat> i don't think i should be giving out that many fives i'll do this with you thank you yeah one we five can, star 
trade our reviews. I don't buy a lot of stuff, but I will. I buy way it. too many things. Yeah. It's that that's I don't really need. interesting. Like well, you're, you're a homeowner, though. Here's uh, here's my. I'm always afraid I'm going to get evicted, so it's a little <laughs> different. <laughs> here's another note. This to eviction. Add. Two out of five. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another here's another node to add to this pile of thoughts. Which reviews do people actually pay attention to? Yeah, because let's... for a product, most people if you can actually sort by reviews and this applies on YouTube whether it's like a phone comes out or just like on Amazon, uh, a lot of people sort by most helpful, but you can choose to read just the three-star reviews if you want to. Yeah. But I think most people choose to read the one star reviews yeah. to see what's wrong with it, yeah, 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 and the five star reviews to see what's good with That's it. That's exactly what I do. And so, if you don't give a five yeah. star or a one star review, most people won't ever see your review, which is kind of what happens with the stratification of like sensationalism on YouTube, which is like a new phone came out, it's all right, but no one's clicking my video if I say it's all right. So I got to say it's terrible or amazing. <laughs> like that's a real force so effect. I could also write a paper about, so up. which is like. Most products are fine. Most products are just three stars, and that's fine. <clears throat> yeah. But no one wants to say that. Like, even the Motorola phone, this is kind of a point of, like, the, that Moto phone, that we, the Moto G 2023 that we yeah. just did, is, like, it's a smartphone. Like, smartphones are incredible. It's amazing. Google Maps in the works on it. Yes. <laughs> like it. It can, like, get you around the world. You can make phone calls. You can browse the internet. You can order from Amazon. You can do... Like, yeah. technically, this is an incredible piece of technology. It's just, like in a vacuum where that's the only thing that it exists. Yes. But as soon as you have context of other devices or the price or like or the price. Any any additional context and you're like, okay, let's step back for a second here. Yeah. Yeah. Put, yeah. put the context in your review that you leave that you know. I just think if you leave a bunch of three and four star reviews, you will I don't know if you care about this, but no one's going to read those uh, reviews. I do. How about, why don't we end this with what are some best practices you guys use when you use reviews? You said you like to look at one and fives. I actually think mm -hmm. three and fours generally have a lot of truth to them. They usually where, like, do. Somebody leaving a three to four star review probably feels pretty strongly about the things that they liked and the one or two things it's that they really the didn't like. It's probably the best review. Yeah. So yeah. I like to look at stuff like that. And I also like to sort by more frequent. I like reviews that are more recent that i know is going to be the exact thing i get from amazon or etsy or whatever on amazon you can sort by most helpful so you can sort still by skeptical reviews that. that have the most reviews mm, <laughs> so review you can leave review. a thumbs up on oh, a review gosh. and it's like oh this review is helpful and so when you go to read the reviews on amazon you can sort those reviews by the most reviewed reviews so if a review is well reviewed you'd review the review and you the people that review <laughs> the reviewers review are Often the people that have not reviewed the actual product. The well, do you have to be a verified review to review the review? No. Anyone no? can review the review. I'm yeah, anyone sure. can on Amazon, Amazon anyone can review, review the review. Yeah. That's what's frustrating about like tech reviews is that there's so many people who like to review your review and they're just like right. good review. But a lot of the time <laughs> Can no, we wrap this so, up, please? Okay, <laughs> look, okay. I'm just saying like there is a way for a review to be a good review even if you don't agree like agree with the reviewer because it covers everything right if you talk about the things that are important that people want to hear about that's technically a good review your opinion about that device yeah. is subjective but it's the people that say like oh this this is a terrible review. I don't agree with you, even though I've never touched the thing. Yeah. That's what's so frustrating it's, about the reviews, review people reviewing the reviewers' reviews of the review. Yeah. Oh, know? one thing I'll say is I've I've always strayed away from giving. Uh, we review lots of things here, but numerical ratings, uh, especially for tech, because yeah. tech improves over time. Yeah. And so a theoretically, let's even say four star product from years ago, the older it gets the more context you have about new things that are better and you'd never get that thing. Today, that thing that was four stars is now one star. Yeah. That thing that was a nine out of 10. Today, the iPhone 4S might've been a nine out of 10 when it came out, but today, yeah, it barely works. It's probably a three out of 10. Context. So I, 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 I've decided, I don't like giving numerical <clears throat> reviews to things. It's always just a the feelings and the experiences yeah. and sharing that with people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And ideally that's the most helpful thing you can do. Yeah. 
I and since it's useful. since you're on Amazon, you have to attach it to a star rating. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you're going to account for like star inflation over time. <laughs> Will you adjust your reviews I, in a year no, when good. the new shower mirror comes out? Well, Probably when stars not. inflate, eventually they lose their energy. They collapse, become black holes. Someone cue the trivia music, please. And Wait, then <laughs> before we do, I, I have one one thing I want to throw in here about reviews. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just one That's last that. thing. <laughs> if you're ever shopping, and this is what I do, if you're ever shopping for pro audio gear specifically, this just applies to pro audio gear, and you want to know if a product that you're buying is going to be durable, specifically if you can like bang it around, take it with you, and it's not going to break, look for someone in the reviews that says exactly this. We have this at my church, comma, and we love it. <laughs> if someone has written that in the reviews, it means that thing is getting banged around and treated terribly, and it works week after week after week, which means That's you a good can sign. trust That's a, it. It's a good sign. Ellis's pro tip. And without... Wait, fun fact. U2's Sunday Bloody Sunday was actually written about pro audio gear at churches. I... Because they bang it around so Trivia. much. Trivia. Like, All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway. Trivia question number two. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. U2's Bloody Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So False. at the beginning of this, we were talking about a lot of Apple products like HomePods and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of the original iPod released in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> what does the pod in iPod stand for? 160 I, I, by 128. <laughs> <laughs> no one will ever get that joke except for us. Uh, and you, yeah, we're not going to tell Here's you. Here's an ad break. All right, welcome back. We don't have much else to talk about, but I do want to show you guys a video. Uh, there is only one YouTube channel. That the when they when they drop a new video, I literally stop what I'm doing and go watch it. What, whatever Wait hour of the day, <laughs> I'm afraid it's not that one. Yeah, I mean I'm subscribed. I got notifications turned on. I got the bell, the whole thing. You know, Andrew does not have notifications turned on to the Waveform podcast. What? What? Fake fan. But with this one, not only do I have notifications turned on, I could be in the middle of something. I, I could be driving, and if I see that notification, I pull over, and I open that notification. And that is the Boston Dynamics YouTube channel. <laughs> because when they drop a new video, as they did this morning on the day of recording, it's Wednesday, um, you just know you're going to see something that's going to change your whole day. I thought you were going to say, I pull over because I need to watch if they finally drop the video of like, this robot will kill you. <laughs> Start running. Very yeah. important. Do I need to turn this car around and save my family? Very important yeah. information. So yeah, I wanted to show you guys uh, the video they put out today because this one is life-changing and just like the rest of them it's really well done and really interesting and i want you to see it so i'm just going to turn this towards you life-changing in like a life-threatening kind of way or like <laughs> you never your know. life will never be as safe as it was before <laughs> you never know all right here we go can you describe it by the way for audience so there's just a guy what do you think the rating holding? of that hammer is with a hammer three out of ten hammer Okay. And <laughs> now there's the Atlas robot, Atlas. the humanoid shaped one at forget? the bottom of the scaffolding. Okay. Runs over, grabs a board. Great cinematography, by the way. Yeah, that lens flare. That lens flare. Spins around, puts the board in place. You can see where this is going. Why is he dancing? Man. Runs he's to the foot of the quads stairs. are jacked. <laughs> yeah, Instead true. of yeeting the tool bag up to the top of the scaffolding, he runs up the stairs. Oh, boy. Oh. Jumps up, ducks under, turns this around, eats an, the bag. Oh, dang. Is it an OSHA violation if it's a robot? <laughs> uh, he needs to get down. <laughs> so just double <laughs> fist his punches the... <laughs> jumps to... I don't... This is insane. And then he shows off a little bit. Oh! Gainer. Yeah. Off the box. Nice. With and the Tiger Woods <laughs> pump. With the, with the pump. pump. The end. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the video. Dismount, 8 well, out of 10. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen. And that dismount was pretty good. Boston that Dynamics. Did you solid. see the dynamics of that, sw bit. that twirl? I could not do that that fluid of a twirl, and that's a really heavy robot. Yeah. These robots have been doing things for it's years terrifying. that I honestly couldn't do myself. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. My main thought was also when seeing this, like one half of my brain, I think I tweeted this before, like one half of my brain is like, it's fine, it's fine. It doesn't. It's, it's totally fine. It's just a pre-programmed series of moves that somebody with a controller told the robot to do. It's not alive, it's fine. It's just rehearsing something that they built a robot to do. 
But then the other half of my brain is like, oh my God, this thing is like going to take over the world. It's clearly <laughs> capable of things that none of us are. It's aware of its environment. It's sentient. It's picking up things. It's wild. <laughs> sentient. Sent- uh, uh, it's not sentient. But no. it is also, it, it does bring up an interesting question to me, <clears throat> which is like, how much of what it's doing is pre programmed? Like it. Yeah. You clearly like set up the scene, you put the board there, right? You put all the the scaffolding there so it can climb up everything. And then when we spent time with the spot robot, if you like steer it at an obstacle, it will walk up to the obstacle and climb over it. Even though I didn't hit a climb yeah. button. Yeah. Yeah. It just it is aware of the obstacle and it knows that with its set of legs and with the things in front of it, it needs to do the certain things to climb over it. Yeah. With this humanoid one, what is it? program to do versus how much of it like when it does the gainer off the <laughs> off the box and then it lands and it does like a hop or two to like get its like Bearings. balance yeah that part is i was uh, just gonna say that it didn't well, stick the landing yeah like it yeah lost yeah. balance but, but the gyroscopes, adjusted itself the gyroscopes are constantly being pinged like a thousand times a second yeah. like they're they're in real time like evaluating its right weight it, distribution if i had to guess also before like we get fact checked on if it's a gainer it's not a gainer it's like a, I don't know, I don't know exactly what it is. We're just saying gainer because it's front funny. flip. It was like a one eighty front flip or yeah. something. Yeah. Did you anyway. just fact check us live on the podcast. Yeah, I know the parkour <laughs> Wait, Adam, can community fact check that? would be anyway. really upset about it. Um, <laughs> uh, like okay, so it yeah. grabs the board. If I had to guess in the whole scenario, I'd say there's like a couple things that are pre planned. Like I don't think it's smart enough to grab a board, like to see the gap and grab the board to fix the gap. I think it's like, yeah. it was, grab this, put it here, and now here's your walking path. In that walking path, you will react to what's in your yeah, way. Yeah, there's definitely like a mix of computer vision with pre-programmed yeah. movements. And in terms yeah. of the like, it it wouldn't think, I need to get down over here, let me push this block off, jump onto it, and then do a 180 front flip off right. the end of it. But I do think... The programming was, walk up to this box, push it, walk up to wherever you think the edge is. Evaluate. Evaluate. Yeah. Then do this jump, then do move. the flip, yeah, and then the landing again is like land as best as you can. Yeah, and it's it still needed to use <laughs> its cameras to get to the edge of that block to then do the flip off of it because because it pushed the block off. It wasn't in an exact coordinate that you could program it to. You don't know how far right. that's going to slide forward or backwards. Yeah. You still needed to clear a gap and then do a flip. Yeah. It's, uh, so it's like if I uh, we need Boston Dynamics. We need here, yeah, yeah. We need someone. To tell us, someone who's worked on this probably, I just imagine like uh, the controller for it, like you you point it at a set of stairs and you just hit forward and it just starts running up the stairs. Like, oh my God, <laughs> it's running up the I stairs. Like, yeah. like it had to figure that out. You pick a face and you just push chase. <laughs> <laughs> I believe what this is probably doing is similar to like a production line. You know those production lines where they're like putting cans on soup or something and they're just like... Whoop. Well, that has minimal uh, that, that intervention. Has exactly. That has like no computer vision. But imagine there's like com- computer vision attached to this so it knows like where it needs to stamp. Like it sees the can, it identifies the camp, then it stamps it. Mm-hmm. Sees the can, stamps it. Like yeah. th- I imagine that this is doing a similar kind yeah. of thing. Uh, it's when it it's when it's able to make its own decisions that we need to start worrying about it ripping out your spine and then, <laughs> and then fist pumping. Yeah. I also I like your tweet. That's like like I just want to imagine your first tweet is the motto for Boston Dynamics. Just like Boston Dynamics. It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. Everything's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. Everything's fine. Yeah. This uh, it's fascinating. I'm I I kind of want to play with the I Atlas totally, one. I yeah. don't. I'm scared. <laughs> I just want to know what happens because it was still it was so cool when we had spot and it was like, all right, would you like to play with it? They hand us the controller. It's like, yeah. go ahead. In like see what 10 happens. minutes, like no training. And so much. I would just like I walk up a curb and I turn around and I hit I hit forward and it just walks up the curb. And yeah. I'm like, I didn't tell it to go up. Mm. It just looked at the curb and that decided cool. to step up like all these little things. I want to know what happens with Atlas. Anyway, uh, that's all. I just want to show you the video. I also think it's cool that Atlas from Portal is like the same shape. It's like the humanoid. Like <laughs> that might be its inspiration. Yeah. For the name. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. If you haven't already subscribed to Boston Dynamics YouTube channel, highly recommend it. Just to stay on top of your robots and happenings. You should probably stay on top of them just before wanna, they yeah. stomp on top of you. <laughs> it looks like since this morning they also released another video called Inside the Lab, taking Atlas from Sim to Scaffold, and it's just like how they did. This, oh, really? I guess. Yeah. Oh, from a couple hours ago. Well, I guess so. I guess we'll be watching that after this. We'll still bring them in. Yeah.
I'm embarrassed to say I haven't seen this video yet. Well, when did it, it come came out? out while we were recording potentially? Okay, so then I'm going to watch it. Okay. 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 But okay. Either trivia way, answers. I bet it. Atlas can't get any trivia answers, right? Ooh, that's a good question. Let's find out. It probably could get all of them actually, but Wow. All right, get your <laughs> boards ready. Don't jump at once. <laughs> Don't everyone get all excited now. Are you guys ready? Yes. All right. Update on the score again. Marquez three. Andrew two, David two. So you're saying there's a chance. There is a chance. <laughs> <laughs> First question brought to you by Ellis. Hey, that's me. In 2000, <laughs> Tristan Lois proposed attaching audio and video to RSS feeds. In 2004, the word podcasting was coined in a Guardian article by Ben Hammersley. In what year did Apple officially add podcasting to iTunes? Hmm. Can you say, can you say the dates again of the other thing? <laughs> I was going to ask that. Is this the closest <laughs> person or is it specific only? In 2000. Mm. 2004 the was the year that... David? Sorry. <laughs> you it, said it in the thing, didn't you? There's a lot of dates here. Okay. In 2000, in 2000, <laughs> Tristan Lois first, okay. In 2000, the idea of attaching audio and video to RSS feeds proposed. Mm -hmm. 2004, there's a Guardian article that invents the word podcasting. Okay. In what year did Apple add podcasting to iTunes? Cue the music. David searching things on his computer. No, I'm not. What? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not searching anything. Sorry, I'll move away. Close your computer. My thing's already down. All right, I got it. <laughs> I'm going to be plus or minus one year. I know that for a fact. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, should I'm do, interested in your answer. Should we do closest or should we do get it or not? For this one, let's do closest. closest. Okay, we're doing closest. Good. All right. All right, who wants to go first? Here's my answer. Read them out. Wait. I said, <laughs> Marquez, dude. I said 2003. Okay. I said 2004. I took a risk. There. I said 2006. What, was it 2005? It was 2005. I knew it. I, so, well, Andrew and I both get points. Andrew. Oh my God. That makes the score threes. I wait, what, what date was it in 2005? Oh. Don't do this. First half or second half of the year. Don't do this. Oh. No. I'm uh, sure don't you want to be, right. be tied with Marquez with me? Take the point where you can. Come well, on. I'm either, I could be tied with you or tied with Marquez <clears throat> or all three of us. No. You're saying either David gets Aren't a point. Aren't you and I tied you? right now? No, you and I are tied right yeah, now. Yeah, we're tied. Yeah. I like to throw a wrench in things. Why do you do this? Oh, man. Are you guys ready sure for I'm this? I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose this. Oh, it was June, June 2005. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, that's the first half okay. of the year. Take the point. Take the point. Let's just take the point, dude. Yeah. I, that's, okay. Come on. I just want to say I, that I, yeah. I thought it was going to be a fun trick question. I kind of okay. did too. That's why I just went with the same year. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. I got too well, far. I don't know. I it. remember on my computer in my class, in my like before school computer class in 2006, opening up iTunes and seeing the little iPod logo and being like, oh, they have podcasts on here for the iPod. Hmm. And I, I guess I was just like, I guess they must have released it the year before, but I only noticed that the year after. Mm. So I funny. wasn't aware that podcasts w were something like that Apple didn't come up with. Themselves. I kind of thought they did too. Yeah, that was what that's I, why I picked the same year because I thought it was just interlocked or something. All right, question number two is brought to you by Pod God the Third. Thanks, Pod God. Hi, it is I, Pod God the Third. Oh, Very nice. Uh, oh, exactly. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> What does pod stand for in iPod, not pod God the third? <laughs> what is this Aren't they the same thing? The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I... Should I, should I cue the music? Yeah. It's taking, it's taking some time? Uh, well, I mean, just always cue the music. When we cue the music, that gives you 30 seconds. Oh, that done. means there's a countdown. I'm done, but I'm wrong, but it's okay. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> That's called being a chill dude. <laughs> I'm, it's either stupidly obvious or I have no idea. Exactly. Can I give you guys a hint? That's what 
We yes, all have the same answer. It is not stupidly obvious. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> so we're all wrong. In that case. Uh, Wait, should I just change my... Okay, change it. Wait, do I have more time then? You got three seconds, my guy. Oh. Two. One. Okay, whatever. I mean, I'm not going to get it. Whatever. Two and three quarters. No, I'm not going to get it. One and a half. Figured. Flip them. And read. <clears throat> <sighs> Mine's a fake word. I said pocket. I said patio on device. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's a recursive acronym. Because I'm hot. <laughs> Do you know what a recursive acronym is called? Is a word for that? Yeah, you have talked yeah. about it on trivia. Yeah, a trivia, was a trivia I was, question. It was one that I wasn't here for and I listened to on my road trip. Me? You, you were guys, there. Yeah, oh. you talked about a uh, reverse acronym. An acronym. That an acronym. acronym. Oh, we did. That talk it was about like that. it was. Wow. It wasn't originally an acronym, and it got made oh, yeah. into an acronym. It was. Through it's it. like all right. Just because. It's just acro- because I'm mad at you. Remember, whoever remembers gets a point. No, shut up. <laughs> There's a free point floating like out there. Acronym. Also, David, you're wrong. Oh, I do remember. <laughs> I do. I remember now. Can David I, said. Should I tell you first? For the listeners. Should I tell you now? Yes. Backronym. Bingo. Uh, yeah, Let's go. Right. <laughs> okay, so David's in the lead with four. Marquez and Andrew tied with three <laughs> because David remembered what backronym was. <laughs> the answer to the question, by the way, yeah. portable open database. Pod. That's... Portable open database. Yeah. Well, that's it then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to our rant on reviews and ratings. I do want to say really... I feel enlightened about that trivia answer. Because I really thought that iPod stu- stood for iPodcast. Podcast. Like portable podcast. I kind of did. Yeah, I fully. I, fully I, thought, I thought podcast got named because they were on the iPod. I thought that is correct. It is a play on the word broadcast. Yeah. I didn't even realize that. But the Guardian termed it. Yeah. Weird. Mm. So uh, Ben Hammersley t- termed it writing okay. for the guardian okay um but yeah the whole idea is that like you're you're broadcasting via an rss feed to ipod specifically okay yeah i'm more on i'm on i'm up in line with like vlogging which is video logging yeah I thought, right. wait is it not video blogging no video well it's it depends on who you yeah, ask because there's both yeah because blogging both are, both are things blogging is b logging you know yeah really no, yeah, I don't. So I don't really know. I don't. Oh, <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> Most people would say it's video <laughs> blogging, but yeah. people who did daily vlogs would call it like video logging their mm. day. So I'm, I'm sure both answers exist. Anyway, thanks for listening. We appreciate you. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for hearing us out. Peace. Bye. Don't forget to rate this podcast, but ignore everything I said about five star ratings. You should definitely rate this one five star and then like on Amazon and go use your threes and fours or whatever. Exactly. But Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. We are partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network and our intro outro music was created by Bane Sill. Bane Sill.